Hey beautiful people, it's Mizko here and today we're going to talk about something a little bit more serious. Careers, failures and rejections and how we can overcome them as UX designers or creatives in general. Now I did want to start this video off with a little bit of validation for all the new subscribers who are probably thinking, why is this 15 year old kid teaching me about career advice and guidance? Well, I'm definitely not 15 and even though I do dress like a kid at times, I do have a little bit of experience in landing UX design roles. So over the years, I have received opportunities from Google, Facebook and also Apple from the United States. And the most proud achievement or moment in my career is that the chief design officer at Microsoft actually reached out to me twice, not once but twice to join his team in Washington. So with that said, I don't know everything about UX design, but I probably do know just enough to help you move forward as a UX designer. So I know that when you are applying for UX roles, it is tough, right? The market is becoming quite saturated and there's a lot of people graduating from these boot camps. But it definitely should not be that hard if you're making the right moves and the right decisions along the way. Also, I do know it doesn't feel great to be rejected. We've all been there. We all started out on all fours. So rest assured that you are not the only one who is experiencing this. We all do and we all have. So in this video, I'm going to ask you five questions. And I've also, because I love you guys, I've also created a Notion template so you can download and also use in this process of applying for jobs and also assessing on how you can progress forward and how you can mitigate some of the mistakes that you make in previous interviews. So let's get right into it, guys, and let's ask you the very first question. Now, the very first question that I do want to ask you is, what do you actually want as a UX designer? Whether you're a junior, mid or senior looking for a new role, I want you to think deeply about it, but not just think deeply about this. I want you to actually write these ideas and wants down on a piece of paper, on a Notion template, whatever it might be. Mainly because if you are struggling to land a role, you are probably already experiencing a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of negativity. And the last thing you wanna do is overwhelm yourself cognitively with all these thoughts and ideas. Writing down on paper or actually documenting it digitally allows you to process your thoughts a lot more efficiently so then you don't actually overwhelm yourself with all these different thoughts. So what do you actually want is a really important question. And there's two parts to this and I'll explain to you why. Now the first reason is because if you go into a job interview thinking I just want to be a UX designer, well, you're not really doing yourself justice because you are coming in with a very broad objective when the company has a very specific need. So if you are saying that you wanna become a UX designer, I'm saying that it is far too broad. What I want you to actually think about and I want you to actually write down on a piece of paper is as something as specific as, I want to learn how to design scalable design systems for mid to large organizations. And don't use this as a guidance, use this as just as an example. Everyone wants very different things. And I want you to write these detailed wants and needs down because when you go into an interview, the first thing that you should be asking the employer or the recruiter is why are they hiring for this design role? Now, the reason is because you want to make sure that what you want, right, potentially let's say you, you want to learn how to design scalable design systems for mid to large organizations because you've already got a bit of experience in doing design systems. You want to make sure that it matches with does this company actually need a UX designer for building out scalable design systems? And if they match, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> then you have a very high chance of actually landing that role. Now, if you are coming in to saying, I want to work on design systems, and this company says, we don't even have a design system, we don't care about design systems, then ultimately you are going to do this. <laughs> right? And even though you have a great portfolio, are you the right fit for them? And obviously this is just an example. Companies will want multiple things, people want multiple things. So what you wanna do is you wanna have multiple things meet and the more needs and wants that meet and actually mesh well together, then the chances of you actually landing that job is going to increase significantly. 
So that is the very first question that I want you to think about and also write down. Now the second question I want you to focus on is, what have I actually done differently? So whether this applies to mid, senior, junior, whatever title you have, because when you apply for a role, you are up against other people who are on the same level of seniority as yourself. So if you're a junior designer applying for a junior role, then there's lots of other juniors. Now, it's really important to think about and write down what have you actually done differently because let's say, for example, you are a junior designer who has just graduated from a boot camp. Well, you're probably thinking, yes, I have a design portfolio with one case study and two smaller pieces of design work. And then another designer who has junior designer who has just graduated from another boot camp thinks the exact same thing. Yes, I have just built my portfolio in Wix. I have one case study and it was a team collaboration and it was like a real client and I have two other design pieces. Well, think about this on scale. You have thousands of junior designers who have done the exact same thing. So what have you actually done differently? Now, if you want to land that role, why would they want to why would a company want to hire you what have you done differently and the most important thing is you don't want to be different for the sake of being different you want to be different because you want to provide a different level of value to the company you are, that you are applying for so if there are multiple junior designers applying for a specific role you don't just want to be different by wearing a red jumper you want to be different because you want to showcase to the company that I can provide you a different level of value because I have one potentially, these are just examples, I have learned how to code on the side and I've also built my portfolio from scratch and I've also built a client project from scratch and, and this is some additional value I can provide your company as a junior designer which others can't. So really think about it, what have you done differently? And rest assured, I know you guys sometimes take my word as the actual gospel, you don't have to provide code and development as an additional skill. It could be the fact that you actually learned how to uh, design a website and build it in Webflow. You don't need to know code. So it doesn't have to be anything specific. It just has to be some additional value that the business would actually find value in. Now, here's another example that might be a little bit more realistic. So you might be applying for a junior design role for a fintech startup and they might be in the trading space. So similar to Robinhood or any application where you can trade stocks. Now, if you go into the interview and say, okay, I've got UX design portfolio, got the case studies, got all the work, and I've also been trading since I was 18 and I've built my portfolio from 100,000 to actually 300,000 through understanding and learning technical analysis. And I also know how to use the MACD and RSI signals to make better assessments but then also recently, I have moved a little bit away from technical analysis and also trying to understand the fundamentals of a business. So then I've also started to learn and I try to understand how to read a balance sheet and also the profit and loss statement of a business. Now see, if I was an employer, I would be thinking, holy crap, this UX designer needs to be hired because one, they can do UX design, but two, they fundamentally understand our business, our industry, and our customers as well. And not only that, he's gone online to learn how to read and how to understand technical fundamental analysis to make better investments in businesses. We need to hire this person. So see that you don't need to learn code, you don't need to learn Webflow, you can learn UX design, but you, but you can also provide value through actually understanding and having true experience in a specific industry that the company that you're applying for is in. Ta-da, if you appreciate that, make sure to gently smash that like button because I am sure if you follow these tips, you are going to land that UX design role. Because tomorrow's going to be your first day. If you'd like to work here, would you like that, Chris? Yes, sir. Good. We couldn't be happier. Now, the third question I want to ask you, and I want you to not just think about it once again, I want you to actually write down your thoughts and answers down because these will spark new ideas as well. Is your portfolio up to scratch? Now, think about it. When you are a UX designer, yes, there is a process. Yes, it's quite technical, but ultimately you still have the word designer in your title and people will still associate the quality of the visual design to be part of the skill sets and value and expertise that you will provide the business. So if you feel like your portfolio is a little bit sloppy, you've got all the technical aspects of it, but it just doesn't look that great. Well, spend the time to really figure out how can you polish up your UX design portfolio. 
I have made multiple videos about UX design portfolio reviews. So simply smash that link above if you wanna learn a little bit more about how you can polish up your design portfolio. And just remember, here's a quick tip for you as well. When you're applying for all these different roles and when you're trying to get yourself out there, remember, people tend to like to look at pretty things. And it's just a sad reality. Even though if you have all the expertise in the world, if, it, if your portfolio doesn't look great and it doesn't capture the attention of a recruiter or an employer, then you've missed out on that entire opportunity. So make sure that you actually do put a little bit more care and attention on the visual aspect of your portfolio. Then the fourth question is, have you updated and have you kept your LinkedIn up to scratch? Now, this one is so important. It is so, 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 so important because a lot of designers overlook the power of LinkedIn. LinkedIn has provided me such great opportunities. All the opportunities that I mentioned before, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, all came through LinkedIn, by the way. So LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. And what you might have realized, if you take a look at my personal LinkedIn profile, I have at least two to 3,000 words within my LinkedIn profile. I explain every little detail about the successes, the achievements that I've got, the details of the specific roles that I had at every single company and what I was able to achieve. Then I've also reached out to every single person that I've worked with and got them to leave me a recommendation because this is like the window to who you are in the business world. If your LinkedIn profile has one sentence and says, I'm a UX designer, well, well, that is the entirety of what someone knows about you who are looking to hire UX designers. You wanna add clarity, you wanna build trust, you wanna build transparency into who you are as a person and also as a UX designer. And you also wanna put your best foot forward so when you do apply for a role, then people can actually learn about you and there's actually substance, there's actually value that you can provide the business. Now, the last question is, why are you failing? Now, this question is a bit of a tricky one here because if you knew why you were failing, then you probably wouldn't be watching this video, right? If you don't know why you're failing, then you're probably watching this video to try to figure out what those answers are. Now, if you do know what the answers are and you're still struggling, then you're not taking enough action. So this question, why are you failing, is really the secret to the success and landing your next role. So what I want you to do is actually write down write down on the piece of paper or in your diary or on the Notion template, why are you actually failing? And I want you to think deeply about it and be really critical and really have self-aware and assess yourself quite critically. I want you to write down every single detail about why you believe you are failing. And from there, I want you to reverse engineer it. Write next to it each reason, what can you do to solve those issues? So if you're saying, oh, I don't feel confident in the interviews and I feel like that's causing the hiccup and that's really causing why I'm failing these interviews is, well, you need to figure out how do, you, how do I build confidence? Do I just need to do more interviews? Do I need to practice my interview with my partner, with my friends? Do I just need to get myself out there? What is it that I need to do that's actionable that I can do right now that will solve these issues? So guys, these five questions, if you actually think about them deeply and write everything out on a piece of paper, you will potentially have all the answers that you need to actually land that job. And what I've also provided as promised is a Notion template. And what I wanna do is, let's just take a very quick look at the Notion template and let me walk you through exactly how to use it. So let's get right into it. So here I have created you a very simple job application tracker. Now, it's very simple. I have a column for the company name, the company role, skills required, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and the status. Now, when you're applying for a role, obviously you're gonna apply for a number of different roles. So you wanna list them all out. You also wanna write down what's the company role that you're applying for. And you just wanna process this. Like, is it actually a junior role? Because you might be applying for other types of roles. Then you want, I want you to think about and read through the job description and actually take a look at the website what are the skills required? Are they a UX design studio? Are they a startup? Are they a large enterprise? What other skills do they actually need, right? This should all be documented and you should feel very confident about all this. Then, after you do the actual interview, I want you to think about what went well, which is the strengths. And then I want you to think about what didn't go well. And I want you to write down the weaknesses throughout that interview process. And then I want you to think about from those weaknesses, what are the opportunities? What can I do better next time to try put my best foot forward so I can turn this awaiting confirmation into a success, right? I want you to 
not just think about your job application and your job progress anymore. I want you to document step by step on how you are performing because like I said before, when you are thinking about everything cognitively, you start to overwhelm yourself and you start to overload yourself. And this can be quite detrimental and this can actually throw you off and make you feel miserable and actually hinder your performance next time. So when you document everything, you're actually putting everything down on paper and you're telling your brain and your mind that, hey, don't worry about it anymore. Notion's gonna hand handle it. I just need to reference this and see what do I need to do next. And you can become a lot more strategic this way as well. Guys, so hopefully this video gave you a little bit more detail and insights into how you can progress and how you can stop getting rejected in UX design interviews. So hopefully you can land that next UX design role. Guys, if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, guys. All right, I'll hopefully see you guys in another video very, very soon.